But are we supposed to connect to the uh, thing? If you log into Canvas, you should be able to log into um, the conference if you want to. And you can watch it on your laptop as well as watching it in real life. It depends whether you want the mediated experience or the real world. This sounds like a Baudrillard thing. <laughs> it's crossing the street. It certainly is. I, I started reading that uh, that uh, translated version. I want all of this. I want I want more texts translated. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? The bits where he gets into the part where he originally talks about Disney World are so great. Yeah. Yeah. So great. The examples are fantastic in it. I must have known. Okay, um, to start off with, we've got a few things I need you to do. Um, first thing is we have a little questionnaire that we need you to fill in. It's about ga gauging attitudes to international collaboration. It's part of our deal for running international courses. We have to get you to fill in these little questionnaires. So during class or over the next few minutes, can you fill out this questionnaire? Very simple scale. Here, one. How are we having them sign it? Um, we'll do the number thing. Okay. What I would like you all to do. There might be some back there. Are we asking for Yeah. Here, can I just one short? Is this one an hour short? Oh, well, short. Is it on Canvas? It's on Canvas, so I'm afraid some people may have to share, but we'll get some more. Um, we might be a little short of the questionnaires as well, then. Everyone turned up tonight. Um, so, there's a little questionnaire. What I would like you each to do with that questionnaire is in one corner of it, I would like you to put a symbol that you will recognize. Could be a number, could be initials and a number or something. Because we're going to hand out another questionnaire and we want you to put a similar symbol on it. That way we can tell, correlate those. But they're all anonymous, we don't need to know who you are, okay? So put some symbol on it and when you get another questionnaire in three weeks, you're going to put the same symbol or number on that, okay? <laughs> Post a zip code, a phone number, uh, your Gmail password. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, put anything on. Is that upon the They're going to me. <laughs> These are mine. Oh, we should have them as well. I say everybody's winning. Everybody's just like, oh, yeah, what can I put on this? I've bought some spare. And tonight, we got everybody, so. <laughs> I can't have the questionnaire on the so I don't think that I can that with the email. How many of you short? Three, four? I can't think of a I'll walk over to my office. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, and and uh, I'll okay. out and then I'll see Charlie. We've got time, right? Hmm? We've got, we got, we got half an hour before we're meeting them. I'll email you the email. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> just... 
I shall return. You need you want me to make copies of the article? Mm -hmm. uh, can do. The, 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 the article's uh, the are yeah. drawing on the book. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Website by our very own Matt Anderson. And you know what the problem of posting up something on the website is, Matt? I don't want to get no, no. I asked you to explain it to the class. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I didn't fully read the entire thing. Yeah. I was in the cell lab when I was, I was working on okay, so mm. I found it, I started skimming it, and people started coming in, so I never finished it. Well, tell us what you got from it, though. Um, it, to me, it was pretty much what Patrick was talking about in the last class, um, which it kind of had my interest because um, it's basically we were talking about the idea of the simulation, like that when we have a field presence in something, like, um, like watching TV. And then, all right, the yeah. best way to say it is um, this, when you and Patrick said that um, we can have we can experience non-mediated non experiences, but we never have a non-mediated experience. And that's kind of, that was like kind of essence of the picture. Right? Is that most everything, you know, there's, there's this inverse presence that everything, like we feel like we're not being mediated through virtual reality. So it's like this inverse presence. Right? Yeah. It's mediation itself. I, don't know I, I actually, I actually thought this paper didn't go far enough. It, it kind of skims, yeah. I, I think we talked about this more deeply in class than they wrote in this paper. Um, I, I was reading this and thinking, you know, I, I, I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I read this paper and thought, geez, you know, a student could, this is meant to be a published paper and it's like reading a student essay a little bit. And it's in presence, but... I, I also have a problem with the journal Presence, which is a computer science journal on virtual reality. I, I, I'm not a big fan of this particular journal. Um, but it is, wasn't it, it is an interesting paper. It, the concept is interesting. I just think they wasted the opportunity in this paper yeah. to actually do it. I think they did a bit more publishing on what we talked about. Like, all right, so some people have been with it, but I kind of do like, the first page of the article. Yeah, they do an experiment, so I don't think the experiment's very good, and then their conclusions don't really say anything. It's, it's a little bit vague, but it touches on the concepts we talked about, definitely. But, um, it says, it says exactly what we said, and Bolderlot said, that our world and our lives are increasingly dominated by mediated experiences. So all the things we talked about, the simulator idea, the use of phones, the, the televisions, all the things that I mediate our experience. Perceptions that ignore or misconstrue the role of the medium in the experience. So what, however, the way they propose to talk about it is a counter trend, which seems to be occurring as well. People are experiencing not an illusion that a mediated experience is in fact not mediated, so they're not saying, I really saw this concert even though I watched it through a phone. But the other way around, the illusion that a non-mediated real experience is mediated. So people are actually, what they were reporting, and the way they did this is they did a survey of news articles, interviews, and the language people use in those articles to describe their experience. And so, 
they, they come up with these three categories. When people perceive natural beauty as mediated, negative when people perceive a disaster or tragedy as mediated, and unusual when these, there, the connection between a real life activity and a mediated experience made them confused. So, we'll have a look at this, and they, they have these quotes which kind of explain the phenomena. The, we kept waiting for Arnold Schwarzenegger to march out of ruins and watch the end credits roll. Mm. That was from a journalist at the September the 11th attacks, you know. Um, I couldn't believe my eyes, I thought I was watching the movie. And I like this one. She was what, this woman was watching TV in a Philadelphia apartment as a man in another apartment in her building, uh, as a man set another apartment on fire and plunged to his death. She saw the guy fall in real life outside her window, but talks about it because she, she was watching TV and talks about it as if she was watching the movie. And so these kind of continual quotes that they find about people, am I really here? This is a great place. I feel like I'm in a movie. Um, it's true we're immune to the fact that, oh, that's just from YouTube, but, but never mind about that. So, so the, what they say is, as media scholars and pundits know, our lives are dominated by mediated experience, and they quote all the things we were talking about last week. Film, newspapers, emails, instant messaging. So the HDTV we talked about increasing the, um, uh, the level of reality in the simulations we watch. And what they were saying is these experiences evoke telepresence, perceptions that ignore or misconstrue the role of the medium in the experience and constitute an illusion of non-mediation. The way I read that is exactly the discussion we had in class about the move to high Blu-ray, high def TV, that we're constantly striving for this realism, which is just increasing the fidelity of the simulation. But what they're talking about is this counter trend where real experience is mediated. And they call this inverse presence. So they give a number of examples of this. Um, they do an experiment which I wasn't really um, completely. Uh, completely taken with their experiment, but um, the way they explained category one is the person experiencing non-mediated beauty in nature. So this was a marine who said the Middle East is like a picture in that National Geographic come to life. So that idea that we explained something. I think they're clutching the straws a little bit here, you know, with the kind of analogies they're using, but they have this second presence where someone sees a bus crash and says it looked like a movie set, so many, many examples of that. And the third one, the example they gave, is confusing reality with some sort of fictional reality. They talk about the actor Bill Paxton, who was in the movie Titanic, but he also went deep sea diving down to the wreck. And he stated that there are times I kept expecting the director to say, Coach will go for lunch, because he was confusing the reality, so they mentioned also. And then the paper goes on and kind of very cursively just um, somewhere down here introduces Baudrillard and Virilio, or the people we talk about, and just gives a couple of quotes from them. And that's about it, you know, hey, here's some theory, you know, that might explain this. They don't really go into any detail at all. So, any comments on that one, before I tell you what I think? You all think your real world experiences are being you're starting to confuse them with fictional mediated experiences. Anyone do that? Uh, I'll do, I mean, they're all 
Yeah. It's all right. You were first. Examples are all traumatic experiences. I mean, no, well, not the natural beauty one. Okay, right. So they're tremendous. They're whatever. They're they're very like you know powerful experiences. Mm -hmm. I guess I think people have a tendency to remove themselves from the situation. I think if they hadn't been watching TV or whatever a lot, they would say uh, thought I was dreaming or something. I guess yeah. people before and beyond media experiences before and beyond TV. <coughs> Would people have said before, oh, it's like a Van Gogh painting, or, you know? I think, I, 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 like I said, I think, you know, I felt, I felt like I was dreaming or something. It's a phrase that I'm sure was up in long before film. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. I felt this didn't convince me totally. And also, I, I felt they really missed what they could have talked about with the theory. But, Patricia, do you? Well, I just remember taking a communication theory class undergrad and there was a theory about people basically it, it explained that the more people watch TV the more likely they are to believe that the world is like a negative place and that more crime is happening and um, yeah. studies show that there's a, a lot less crime that happens in the world than people um, who watch a lot of TV kind of believe that there's out there I know so kind of that's absolutely right because um, we have this negative view um, we're going to have to get ready for the conference call in a minute, but I don't know. It's worth having a look at this paper. It's interesting, but what I thought they really missed was one of Baldrillard's fundamental things was this idea of the fact that an experience, even if it's not a simultaneous experience, mediates our reality. So the very fact that you train in the flight simulator alters who you are when you fly that plane. So the very fact that we watch all this media and have this is, is changing who we are and changing our experience. And they seem to have completely missed any of that kind of concept at all. <coughs> they just, they didn't even, it seemed to be the one thing that linked what they were talking about to the theory and they didn't, yeah, but I'm not an expert, but they seem to have, you know, just basically said who he is and he said that, there are these simulations. Let's talk about something else. You know, it's not a very good paper, really. But interesting, but not very good. So try harder, Matt. Find a better one. Do you want me to write my own version? <laughs> <laughs> my summer project. Yeah, I, t I started it thinking, oh, this is because we talked about the concept. I thought this is going to be really interesting. It's a good concept. And then, as I read it, it didn't impress me. I'll, I'll spend the summer writing. I'll take some of my presence and immersion for you should. Um, one of the things we're doing uh, tonight with the Australians, I spoke to Lisa last night, we tested this connection, it all worked pretty well. Um, what we're going to do, hopefully, we have the video running down here, we'll bring them up um, and hopefully we'll connect with their class. Um, we're not going to do anything too academic tonight. We're going to talk about the two countries, do a bit of introduction, talk about what each class has studied, things like that, okay? It's going to be all about um, talking to Australians tonight, hopefully. Um, and I'll be stood up here, you know. You, you can go in, Gil, you know, you can watch it. You can meet, watch it on the computer if you want. Uh, it, it, the way it's set up. Um, the university has all these tools to allow us to do video conferencing and they paid all this money for it. And this is just, this runs in Canvas, which is free, and it's so much better than the stuff the university has. Yeah, you know, it's brilliant. You know all, that, uh, all those buttons that were in, in the Oh room? yeah, it was it, It's a horrible interface. <laughs> there's the three, share video, share audio, share your desktop, there. And there's an upload of presentation there. That's it. Yeah. And there's a chat running. That's Videos appear better. there. Audio appears there. That's it. I was it. afraid we were going to have to use that hmm? tonight. I was afraid we were going to have to use that tonight. I was thinking, I can't remember anything. I didn't hear that. Okay. I mean, I opened it last night. And there's just these massive buttons. And you have to remember what they all do. It's horrible. This is just so much easier. And it does all the things we wanted. You want to upload files, share video and audio on yeah. screen. So, yeah. Now... Hopefully, they will come online. Now, their class doesn't start till 7.30, so it may take them a while. What time is it over there? It is 
9.30 in the morning. So, um, I'm going to send Lisa a message just saying that we're in. Let me... Mm -hmm. So, canvas. and we'll see what we'll see what happens. But what we're hoping to do is do this for the next um, two uh, next two weeks. We're going to do this for the next two weeks, and over the next two weeks, we'll have hopefully the the kind of plan. We'll talk a bit about it tonight. Is one session that Patrick and I will lead from here on narrative and one session that will be led from Australia. So you'll kind of have a Lisa lecture, one of those lectures to, with the Australians in as well. That's what we're hoping. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. So, um, well, I can carry on talking, or you can, while we wait. Anyone read any of the Baudrillard? Anyone look at it? It's great. It's, you know, the, that translated version. The translated version. It's is great. great. Yeah. It's the way that they talk about uh, how it's like uh, the, the different levels of, of simulation or whatever. So, uh, and they talk about it in terms of a picture of your girlfriend. So it's like, this is a picture of your girlfriend. This is a picture of your girlfriend that you have modified in Photoshop to make her tits look bigger. Uh, this is, this is uh, a an, an picture of a model or whatever um, that is not your girlfriend, you're just claiming that it is. And this is something that you drew yourself and it doesn't even look like what I, I thought that was that, the way that they... There was a moment where they, they said uh, dirty deeds, like, you know, political, they ended it on dirty deeds. He said, yeah, I know in your head you just said done dirt cheap, done dirt cheap, fucking ACDC. I mean, for, there's got to be a lightning bolt key on the, on the keyboard. How do they write their press releases, you know? <laughs> I, I love it. It is good. It, it's a very good article, and it explains the Baudrillard theory really well. Um, and what I like about it is they keep almost all of the original examples that Baudrillard uses, but then add a pop culture reference, an example that makes it easy to understand and puts it in a context. It's, it's very, very well written. Um, very, it, and it doesn't lose any of the original content. Some of the, like, you could argue that the Baudrillard is more poetic and beautiful, but it's also a lot harder to understand. Yeah, so it does read quite easily. Um, I like how what he says when, uh, when he says, "Yes, I am drawing a parallel between Hitler's murder farms and the parking lot at Disneyland. If you can't take the heat, eat a pack of dicks." <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. I do. I, I I really enjoyed reading it, and it was uh, was funny. Um, so, <clears throat> last night, um, Lisa went down to her classroom and logged in and we tested out this connection and it seemed to work pretty well. We had a clear video, we had clear audio, we had everything running, but we'll see how it goes. Well, the way it should work is each of you will get an invitation to the conference that will be running all the time. One of the nice things about this that we're thinking about, or I'm thinking about, is that if you create a group, say you create the groups as we worked in the group project, you can create your own conference. And you can all talk to each other in one of these and create your own little video conference. It's a, it's a lovely little system way of... And, Anyone can log. The beauty of this is if someone can't attend class and we're running one of these, you can just log in from your home and join in the class even if you're not here. So it's a wonderful system. Oh, there's Lisa. Oh, yeah. 
as soon as she turns herself on. Oh, and then we've got to see if we have sand, which we should have. Hey, Lucy, can you hear me? Lisa? Hello? Hello, Lisa? You're all on film now as well, you know. Australians. Um, <laughs> Lisa, can you hear me? You are currently the only person in this conference. Oh, <laughs> That happens to me a lot. I end up talking to myself. Uh, Lisa's just dropped out. She'll probably come back in in a minute. Hello? I wonder if we'll get more of you in if I move this back here. You can be that camera operator as well. Right, it's a bit so awkward because of the cable, but yeah, see what you can do. Where will we see her and which box does she show? Um, there's another video box will appear next to this one, and we can open one or the other up okay. when she appears. And she'll appear here. Two cameras. She's, she's, her audio is on. Oh, How's that picture? That's I can't, I don't know what it looks like. Can you try to get through? Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. It's showing Jack to this. And I'm looking at that. Yes, yeah. reflection of the So I won't mess it up if I go on the canvas and try to do No, you should be able to have that mediated experience. But the beauty of being on. What? I'm watching myself. I'm looking at my, looking at me, looking at my laptop, on my laptop, looking at. Yeah. I'm, I'm caught in a paradox. I wonder if they can hear us. Hello? tell it's working because when I talk, the sound guy comes and appears. Yeah. Oh, there she is. We can hear you, Lisa. Good evening. There she is. Sorry, we. Yes. Yeah, we're good. Can you hear me? Very well. I can hear you. I was pulling up my volume. Good morning, everyone. Can you see us? I can see you. Hello. We can't see your students. Oh, there they are. Hey. <laughs> Hello. I want to know the way you guys. If we can get you shot. Hello. <laughs> we have a we have about twenty well about twenty two people here today. I do want to say we have a lot more than normal. They've all come out to see you. <laughs> can you hear? Amy, can you get closer to your microphone, please? We can. We can. 
Um, we have about 22 people here today. We usually only have around 16, 17. They've all come out to see you. Fantastic. That's great. How, how many students? Well, how many are over there? We've got four of us here at the moment. The others are all running late because it's an early morning class and they sometimes sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not, we're not going to make any value judgments. <laughs> you can get in a bit closer. Oh, excuse me, we've got the last round. Okay, so we got your survey. Good. Got good. the survey, thank you. Well, if you can. If you can do, uh, uh, no need to do it right now, but if you can do that sometime pretty soon and send it to us, that would be useful. Okay. Um, that sounds good. What, we're going to, what we were going to do was, um, we were going to do a few introductions and trying to get, get people talking to each other a little bit. Yeah, beautiful. That's a great uh, idea. Yeah, I know, and, and, and the students hate doing this, so it's really good to embarrass them. You're going to embarrass your students, are you, Tony? That would be unusual. Be yeah. <laughs> I'm your students, Lisa, as well, of course. Are oh, you going to embarrass us? Okay, we're ready. We? we are. Well, <laughs> we're just going to talk a little bit about it. Well, that's what we're going to... What I was going to do first... I was, gonna, I was going to set a little task for your students and my students. Um, uh, something that will be interesting for us to see what, what the students think of this. What I, want, what I want them to do, your students and my students, I want you each to think of two things. Okay? I want you to think of one thing that represents America and one thing that represents America. Yeah, and one thing that represents Australia. It can be an object, a concept, a place, a thing, a person. And each of you to think of one. And I just want to see what my students come up with for Australia and what you students, your students think of for America. And how they compare. Okay. So we'll pick a one thing for each country. And you as well, Lisa. When would you like us to do this, Damien? Right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to start a ticking clock. Okay, you are on. <laughs> no, each person think of one thing. Each per Lisa. Lisa, each person think of one thing. Yes, we will. <laughs> and then we'll take some ideas. So everyone have a think of one thing. Yep. I wrote this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 
How are we doing, Lisa? How are we doing? It's the American one that was like, I can't, there's too many to choose from. <laughs> no. Whereas in Australia, there's only one thing. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I, mean I think I have a pretty good, like, I got a pretty good Okay, everyone? You ready? Okay, well, I won't, em I won't embarrass your students first, I'll embarrass mine. <laughs> okay? So, so, let's make sure the people you can see on the camera. Anthony, you're right in the middle, go on. See, see, see what defines Australia for you. Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, I, I want your students to judge these. <laughs> Did you get that, Lisa? No, we need you to translate. Okay, I'll, tra I'll translate. That first one was the Great Barrier Reef. Ah. I want your students to judge these, how well my students are doing. <laughs> Kevin, you're in the next. Uh, the Road Warrior. The what, sir? <laughs> what was that? Mad Max. Mad Max 2. Road Warrior. <laughs> Road Warrior. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, who else is in shot there? Philip, at the back there. Me? Um, the, the sea Shepherd, Paul Watson. Sea Shepherd. The Greenpeace boat. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Adam, you knew, you know you're next. Walkabout. Hmm? Walkabout. Walkabout. Yeah. Can we can we get Patrick at the back there? Patrick. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other the other the other I academic. Patrick's there. Here's uh, Rock. Here's Rock. Here's Rock. Well, it's not called that anymore. No, it, no, it's uh, Uluru. Yeah. Well, um, right at the back. Go on, Chris. Oh, great. I, I, I'm going to be this guy, so nobody else has to say this, but Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> not, not, a st not a stereotype or anything. I'm going to be the one who says that, so nobody else has to. He says he said that, so no one else has to. <laughs> Tom, do you want to? Uh, the most important part of the risk game board, everybody knows that Australia is the reason that every game of risk takes 18 hours because yeah. Australia. <laughs> so you control Australia. Yeah. You put all your troops there and you can control the troops. Did you, did, you, did you hear that, Lisa? Oh, unfortunately, we saw the body language. <laughs> He was very passionate. He was very passionate about the game of risk. That if you hold Australia, you win. In the game of risk. Yeah, if you take the uh, Australia in the board game risk, you win the game. Oh wow! Did you know that? Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Dingo babies. Oh, uh, dingo babies. <laughs> 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 Babysitter team by dingoes or dingo babies. Dingo babies. Dingo babies. Ding
What are you doing in the office? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's this a part from the American version of The Office where they do accents and. Oh, okay. Kevin um, does Dingo Baby. Okay, Dingo Babies. It's apparently it's from the American it's from the American version of The Office apparently where they do Australian accents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you want to get? Uh, Aaron? Uh, I'd say the, uh, the Sydney Opera House. Sydney Opera House. Beautiful. Patricia? Vegemite. Vegemite. <laughs> yeah, we have, to, we have some cultural sensitivity. They know Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? Uh, I've always been told uh, Foster's is Australian for beer. Foster's? <laughs> Foster's beer. Foster's beer. <laughs> no one in Australia drinks Foster's. They're exportable. <laughs> Look at them all shaking their heads. <laughs> Where do they drink in Australia? Uh, Cooper's is the best. Hold up. Brian at the back wants to shout something. Go on, Brian. Uh, Ned Kelly. Hmm? Ned Kelly? Oh, nice. Nice reference. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural reference. Yeah. Katie? Uh, Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. As a phrase. Okay. <laughs> Was that too in? Bob's your uncle. Bob, Bob is your uncle. Absolutely right. Bob is your uncle when you're in Australia. Everything goes well. Everything goes well, and Bob is your uncle when you're in Australia. And so I think we'll have Uncle Bobby next. Boomerangs. Boomerangs. Yeah. They come back, you know, you throw them and they come back to you. And everyone in Australia carries one. We all carry them and throw them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't remember your name at the back there. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, mine's Kevin Rubin. <laughs> Go on. Uh, Kevin Rubin's. Kangaroos. 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 No one, Beautiful. No one had said it yet. Matt. No one said that yet. Kangaroos. Thank you, Sebastian. Mine's more of a question. Like, um, what's the outback? Outback. What, what is it? Matt says outback and he doesn't really know what it is. Okay. No, that's good. That's very good, Matt. Yep. Outback is there. Big. It's big. <laughs> Gabriel. Oh, that's, that's all right. If it's one that's gone before, which one were you going to say? Another kangaroo. So two kangaroos. Yes, there are at least two kangaroos in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby. Rugby. Yeah. Rugby. What was that one? Rugby. Oh, rugby. Yes, yes. <laughs> rugby, which comes second, of course, to... No one said it yet, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what game do they play in Australia? Australian football. Australian football. It, it's not called Australian football. What, what's it called? What's it called? Footy. They got Australian. They got Australian football, so they're nearly there. Australian rules football, also known as footy. Australian footy. rules football. It also means that they rule football. That's <laughs> the kind of joke. Yeah. Out back. We got two for out back, so that's good. Which one's the steakhouse? Carly? Yeah. I'm behind the camera. Carly's my TA <laughs> behind the camera. Hello. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay. Last one's Gil. Go on, Gil. Um, that's my answer. 
Hmm? Tasmania Island. What Tasmania. Island? Tasmania. Tasmania. Wow. One for Tasmania. Tasmania, well done. Very well done. <laughs> John? And did you reduce? <laughs> well, I think did you reduce is the last one. Did anyone not go? I think we've got everyone. Can we get everyone? Did you reduce? That's a good one. I was going to say did you reduce. Oh, two did you reduce. Two did you reduce. Fair so enough. Look at that. Yeah. We we've, we've managed we've managed most of the cultural stereotypes there. Uh, I think. <laughs> I think you've done very well indeed. Yeah. I'm very happy to see our Indigenous Australians get a very strong representation here, don't they? You, um, yeah. I, what I'm interested in is if, if you guys had to describe Australia by an object, would you choose the same objects? Or by a oh, thing? Okay, you want to speak up? Will help? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very vocal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well done. Any thoughts on that? You guys? Yeah, anything else we missed? Anything you think that we missed or you would have said instead of any of those? Are any of those you wouldn't have said? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that you guys didn't put convicts on there. Sorry? I'm very happy you didn't put convicts on there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote down. <laughs> Matt, Matt says he wrote it down but changed his mind. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. <laughs> um, Okay, now it's your turn. You tell us what, what you think defines America as an object. Fine. Um, I have down New York. New York. Well... <laughs> Lisa lived in New York, so... Um. <laughs> but we got... New York's a funny place because we live in New York. <laughs> but you probably mean New York City. <laughs> yeah, where we, where we live is a little bit different. <laughs> if only we had windows. <laughs> yeah, Matt, Matt just shouted out, it's the outback. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. That's why it goes beautiful. It is beautiful. Very beautiful. Yeah. In the summer. All right. Yeah, Lisa. Lisa came in the summer. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. What? Well, what else from America? Hamburgers. What was that one? Hamburgers. 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 Yeah. You know the funny thing. When when I when I was just doing this now, my answer about America was fried food. Mm. That's what defines America for me too. Is food. Yeah. yeah. What else? <laughs> Everyone here is nodding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? The flag. The flag. Yeah. That works. Oh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. What else? Um. Baseball. Yeah. What about you, Lisa? Uh, I had an apple pie. That's my cliche answer. It's just American and apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows up 